Shalom Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Got some very interesting broadcasts we're going to be sharing with you today. First, starting with North Korea. Later, we'll air here on Israeli News Live an interesting message we put together for Danoon Institute. So those of you that have not subscribed to our teaching channel, Danoon Institute, you might want to check this out. Uh, I would encourage you, though, uh, keep in mind, it is kind of a prophetic news-based uh, broadcast, so it will air later today on Israeli News Live as well, or either tomorrow, one or the other. So just want to encourage you, though, if you want to see it before it gets here, then definitely go out over to Danun Institute, our YouTube channel there. I'll put it in the description link below. And also, those of you that really appreciate the work that we do and would like to support this work, we definitely do need your help. So consider giving. Go to IsraeliNewsLive.org. You can give there. Or if you're on Israeli News Live, watching this particular video on our YouTube channel there, right below uh, or right above the subscribe button on our channel is a place where you can donate directly here on our channel. We thank you and blessings to you for, for being a part of that. Let's get right into what's going on. This very image here, and of course this was uh, two days ago now, where North Korea did a blackout of the entire nation. Now you're seeing, you're seeing here South Korea, you're seeing over here China, Russia way up here into the north uh, part here of the planet. And of course, North Korea did a blackout as part of a military drill that they are working on there. And a uh, very serious situation, no doubt. It says here on North Korean news, North Korea conducts blackout exercises and mass evacuation drills. Uh, according to the sources, rare drills spotted outside of Pyongyang, especially on the east coast and sources say. Uh, North Korea conducted this rare blackout, so the wartime preparations were not observed in Pyongyang. Further sources said uh, were restricted to locations outside of the capital, particularly on the east coast of the country. I can imagine what they're considering is the fact of a ground invasion. Now, to top that off as well, uh, North Korea is on the verge of a, of a catastrophe, according to China's experts here, on their nuclear side. China is warning the Kim uh, to stop the test because they're afraid that the mountain is about to collapse. And if the mountain actually does collapse, of course, it would cause a massive radioactive leak uh, from the signs that, the, that they're actually seeing there. Uh, very troublesome situation indeed. Uh, we also have here the U.S. military aircraft have been seen heading uh, for North Korea. This was today here on October the 29th. Uh, fears of World War III are about to start. Now, the aircraft was not war planes, but reconnaissance planes there. Uh, and they show this in, their, in the uh, article right here showing there from South Korea headed north to North Korea there. So it's not like a war is about to erupt, but you never know when a war with North Korea could erupt. That could be at any particular time. And it seems like that President Trump is now at that point to where all options are definitely on the table. Another article I thought was kind of interesting that came out, Center for Statistics and International Studies, Allies and Influence, October 27th. They're saying here, Russia was saying that uh, three nations, uh, that says there isn't a number system in the world in which three is greater than 73. And yet in Syria, an alliance of three governments has run circles around an alliance of 73, imposing its orders on a violent and chaotic situation. It is tempting to see the whole episode as a sign that the alliances are overrated and that going forward in the United States should worry less about uh, the world on its side. But if the conflict in Syria teaches us anything, it is that the United States needs to put more energy into building its alliances since the world, uh, w excuse me, we will face after Syria will require them even more. Uh, very interesting the way that Russia brought this out that uh, three nations basically have defeated 73 nations. Uh, that's kind of troubling in a way, but yet at the same time, you know, we didn't need 73 nations ganging up on uh, a little country like Syria to begin with. Uh, this article here, and I've been seeing this for the last couple of days, there's been some intel uh, seeping out of Syria. Russia has suffered at least 131 uh, killed in actions in Syria in the first nine months of 2017, equating to an annual 
KIA rate of 1.7, an estimated 10,000 troops in Syria. That is over half as bad as America's worst year in Vietnam War, which was 3.2% in 1968. Now, the point is, though, I'm not really worried about the ratio numbers here. This is also a confirmation that Russian soldiers are fighting alongside of the Syrian army in the country there. And uh, 131 deaths uh, for Russia is quite a staggering number. Uh, we know a general was killed near Deir Azor. Uh, Russia did blame the U.S. on his death. Uh, even though they knew that it was the uh, either the Kurds or the ISIS militants that actually did the striking, but in the coordination with the U.S. is what they were actually claim, claiming on that. So a very troubling situation there. And of course, now they're saying that uh, Russia nearly, uh, with the hel helping Syria's military army there, have nearly taken over 90% of the country back under its own command there. Uh, that may be a little bit disputed on those figures there, but nonetheless, it is bringing this war to a close with the exception of the rise of the uh, the coalition between the Kurds and the United States on the eastern side of uh, the Euphrates River. Uh, that being one of the richest areas of oil in the country there. And it does seem that the U.S. is going to use that coalition between the Kurds and the U.S. to be able to strengthen and even possibly declare autonomy for the Kurdish people in order to get those oil reserves shipped back to the U.S. Uh, speaking of oil reserve, the rise of the Petro Yuan is now coming up. The Chinese Yuan is definitely pushing against the U.S. dollar to be replaced as a as a uh, world trade currency on the Petro dollar. Says in the uh, 1970s, oil trade is almost entirely between conducted in U.S. dollars, even when buyers were from differing nations. So now the Yuan is pushing against, and Beijing hopes to challenge the dollar by setting up futures markets with its own currency. The one uh, to that end reports indicates that China is set to introduce the oil and benchmark price in one in the coming months there. And the more that this happens, the more the U.S. dollar will deteriorate as a result. So regardless of what President Trump is saying on the rise of our dollar, it's not going to do us a whole lot of good in a situation like that. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Don't forget, check out the Noon Institute. Very fascinating article from Matthew 24, some insights I've never thought about before. And I have a, I have a strange uh, belief here that it may be that all, these, all this bid for independence around the world could very well be prophetic sign that we're living in right now. Check out that video if you want to see it earlier or later tonight or tomorrow. You'll see it here on Israeli News Live. Erev Tov. And don't forget, IsraeliNewsLive.org. Help keep this broadcast on the air. Thank you.